In this Paneling Tools video tutorial, we'll take a look at managing library patterns. In the Paneling Tools drop-down menu, Manage Library Patterns flyout, you can manage, save, or load either two-dimensional or three-dimensional patterns. These patterns will then be found in either the Panel 2D Grid or the Panel 3D Grid commands. First, I'll make a new 2D pattern by clicking on Manage 2D Patterns, then New in the command line, and then just follow the prompts. So I need to specify an origin point, 0, and Enter, and then specify the next point in the grid. And by default, it'll be a 2x2 two two grid, but up in the command line, we can change the number of points in both width and height. I'm going to make this grid 5x5. Five five. And then it's just a matter of connecting the dots. And you want to create a closed polyline here that describes the border of your library pattern. And once it's closed, press Enter, and you'll see it shaded. It's displayed with its neighbors as well, and right now they're overlapping. So in the command line, I'm going to shift in both the X and Y direction the number of spaces that the pattern takes up. So I'm going to shift four spaces in X and four spaces in the Y direction. And then lastly, I'll click on Name in the command line and name this pattern. I'll name it Test and then enter my way out of the command. Next, we need something to panelize. So I'm going to take this surface and create a paneling grid using the Surface Domain option. And the important part here is that I want to use span numbers that are divisible by the same number of spaces that the pattern takes up. So for the number of spans in the U direction, I'll use 36. And for the number of spaces in the V direction, I'll use 16. And then I'll go directly into the Panel 2D Grid command. And under the Pattern list, we have all the defaults, and at the very end is the library pattern we just created and named, called Test. And just like any other panelizing routine, you can pick the panel shape type. I'm going to use ISO, since I used Surface Domain for the grid. And you can also pick what types of geometry you'd like to make. I'll just make faces. And I'll hide this surface for a second so you can see just the paneling. Now to make a 3D library pattern, it's very similar. You go into Manage Library Patterns Flyout again, and this time Manage 3D Patterns. New in the command line, pick an origin point for the pattern grid. I'll use 0 again, and then pick a point for the next point in the grid. And it is 2 by 2, but again in the command line, we can change the width and height in points, and I'm going to use 4 by 4 here as well. And then it's a little hard to orient right now, so I'm going to use a hotkey while I'm in the middle of this command. I'm going to use ZS for zoom selected, and now these points are the center of my camera rotation, which is going to make drawing a lot easier. And then it's a matter of connecting the points. The top layer of points are displayed in a red color, which makes it a little bit easier. And as soon as you make a closed polyline, just press Enter, and you'll see that face shaded. It takes a little bit more practice than the 2D variety, but if you do it a few times, you'll get the hang of it. And up in the command line, if you make a mistake while drawing a closed boundary, there's an undo option, and there's also a reset option as well. And I'm likewise going to shift the pattern by the number of spaces. So in this case, it's 3 by 3. And shift in X and Y. And then I'll click on Name again in the command line and name this one Test2 and Enter. And enter your way out of the command. I'm going to make a new grid of points for paneling the 3D library pattern. So I'm going to create a surface domain grid again. And this time the number of spans will be 12 by 9. And Enter. 
and I'm going to need a second grid in order to panel the 3D routine. So I'm going to use, under the grid utility flyout, offset points. I'm going to take this grid of points and offset it using this surface as the direction. And then we can go directly into panel 3D grid. And panel 3D grid is a little bit different than panel 2D grid in that you should make sure you have the correct pattern specified before you start selecting the paneling point grid. So under pattern, you can see all the defaults, box 3D, partition, etc. And at the very end is test 2, the one we just made. And likewise, you can pick what types of geometry to make. And in this case, I'll just make faces. Since the bottom of the pattern was not closed, it was not a solid. And then I'll select the first grid, enter, second grid, and enter. And there's the 3D pattern. Now any of these library patterns that you make, you can save or load them. And if we save the 2D patterns, it's this command. And if we save the 3D patterns, it's this one. And when you save a 2D pattern, the command line will ask you to specify a target file. So I'm going to save that pattern called test, the one that was 2D right now, and I'm going to name it test, and it'll be a .txt file, and then I'll save that. And I'll show you what that looks like. This is what the text file looks like right now. And we had only one library pattern saved, and that was called test. If we had another one, it would be below this, also named, and it would have a series of connected points as well. So any number of saved library patterns will end up in this text file for the 2D library patterns. And the same goes for the 3D library patterns. And when you save out a 3DM file, all the patterns will stay in it. But if you want to share patterns with someone else, you can just give them the text file and they can load it also through the Manage Library Patterns flyout. And they'll just be loading that TXT file. And that is how you use library patterns in paneling tools for Rhino.